absolutely value their input, you know, and if they make a request that is something I can do, I will go out of my way to do that. Some random number and they're like, oh, hey, Jason, are you in Cancun? I was like, what the f***? Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Bot Sandwich, the podcast about sex workers and sex industry. Today with me, I have the pleasure to have Jason Collins. Hello, Jason. Hey. So, as usual, my first question for everybody, just to break the ice, share with us your social media where we can find you, Twitter, Instagram, all the pages, and whatever you want. Instagram, Twitter are both at Masculine Jason, just one word, Masculine Jason. Then OnlyFans, just for fans, all that stuff is Masculine Jason as well. Usually I start with a question, but I will definitely start with something else with you because I'm curious immediately about this. Because you have like brand yourself with two names. You have Jason Collins, like a lot of website is like Masculine Jason. Is there a reason? When I first got in this industry, I'm like horrifically bad or when it comes to coming up with names. And one of my exes was like, oh, just pick Masculine Jason. So I was like, okay. But then uh, porn studios, they like names that are very traditional. So when I got an agent, he's like, okay, you need to come up with like a traditional name. And then that's when I picked Jason Collins. But generally the, the studio work is Jason Collins. And then my own content is Masculine Jason. So back to the routine, to the truck. When did you start? How did you start in the porn industry? God, when it comes to memory, well, time, I'm horrifically bad. I used to do um, escorting and then this famous porn star contacted me and she asked me if I would, you know, shoot with her and she would pay me. She was extremely attractive. So I was like, fuck yeah, okay. So I got to her place. So we're starting shooting content and everything and, you know, just talking a lot about what she does and everything. Halfway through, I was like, actually... How about you don't pay me and you just teach me how to do what you do? You know, it's the whole give a man a fish eats for a day, teach a man a fish eats for a lifetime. I've always just kind of been like a sponge. If, you know, you put me around someone who's smarter or more successful or anything, like I just want to learn anything and everything I can. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do this. And I, I'm not expecting this to pay off overnight. I'm not expecting it to pay off in six months or anything else. And I invested, fuck, probably $20,000 in like equipment, like as far as like camcorders, professional lights, external mics, like a top of line MacBook Pro for video editing, just, you know, everything I would need. Because I've always been the type that if I'm going to do something, I'm not going to like half-ass it. And in the beginning, shooting my own content was Oh, a nightmare because you know, I had like you know 100 followers or 200 followers so when I message people they're like who the fuck is this yahoo you know I had no credibility I had no you know name if you will back then so it was just hours and hours and hours of just messaging just random people and you know there were times I had to message 100 people before one person would agree to shoot with me you know, it was a lot of hard work, a lot of shooting at times that I didn't necessarily want to. Then, you know, I got an agent, so I started getting studio work. It's just like, I remember the first time I got to like $2,000, I was like, yeah, I'm super excited, like 2000 <laughs> Like a lot of times people look at me and where I'm at now and think, oh, you got it easy. And it's like, no, it wasn't always like this. Like I had to work my ass off to get to where I'm at. Is this your only job? Is your only income? Or do you have also another job? Well, I'm also a full-time student, full-time grad student. So I'm working on my master's in business okay. administration right now. Okay. And I also have my own YouTube channel, which is just called Cigar Talks with Jason Collins. I still do some escorting, but not really so much. Like maybe two, three clients a month, if that. And pretty much you stole my next question that I had. I made some research about you. And I thought you were a student student on computer science my undergrad i started in computer science it wasn't challenging to me okay half my classes i could sleep through like so my undergrad i ended up switching to marketing and psychology so yes originally it, it was computer science but then it just kind of evolved over time let's say that you i hope for you you, you graduate and you get your master's degree would you think you will leave behind your porn job 
Oh, that's a good question. I've kind of gotten to a point now where like I can create the content that I want to create. I, I don't have to do the stuff that I don't want to do. And, you know, I'm able to set my own schedule and I love the flexibility. I think I'm probably most passionate about is my YouTube channel and, you know, that and, you know, porn kind of tie. Only time will tell. That's yeah. the best answer I can give you. But still in this, are you not afraid about what you're leaving behind in case you want to move to like a more traditional job? I mean, you know, there are like a lot of judgment being in the porn industry. Are you not afraid that could affect hunting for a job? Maybe I'm overly optimistic, but I, I feel like everything's in how you present it and how you carry it. Option A would be like, oh, like I, I was in porn. I hope that's okay. Like, fuck that. This is my story. This is how I went from being nobody where I was at. And, you know, I did that all on my own. So I've obviously got the entrepreneurial mindset. I would rather sell it as a positive. I'm I'm more worried about or the tattoos okay. on my hands disqualifying me than I am my work in porn. You're pansexual, right? For me, personality is truly everything. Male, female, trans, whatever. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, I care about your attitude, your personality, your outlook, the way you carry yourself. Tons of people at the gym or grocery store or whatever were like, physically, they're super hot. And then they'll be like, oh, yeah, look at me. I'm so sexy. And you're just like, Bleh! And they like nosedive to it, right? <laughs> The woman who cuts my beard, because I can't, she was out, this other woman cut it, and like traditionally not very attractive. She was so fucking positive and like upbeat and happy and peppy. And like she had such an amazing personality. And after like talking to this woman for five minutes, she was like a fucking perfect 10. Confidence in the way she carried herself and how positive she was. So those things matter more to me than any physical attribute. My main question was like, let's say that you're pansexual for convenience. Have you ever get judged in the porn industry? I think there are some gay people that say, oh no, he goes also with women. No, 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 no. And I think there are some gay people that have some kind of judgment about bisexual people. Yeah, actually, an exact comment that sticks out in my mind. Quote, oh, baby, I just love you and your rough head and your body. I wish you weren't bisexual. I have a real problem with that, as I say my problem. But so do many of your fans feel the same way, but are afraid to tell you. So, yes, absolutely. Freaking lutely, there are a ton of gay guys who have a huge problem with that. But then there are a bunch of like gay guys that if you tell them they're straight, then they get turned on out of their mind and they're super interested. Really, at the end of the day, I've realized that, you know, it's kind of like if you were a host at dinner, no matter what you serve, somebody's going to bitch and complain, yeah. right? Yeah. So you can never please everyone. And I guess I just learned throughout the years, just be true to yourself and you're never going to make everybody happy. Do you think becoming a sex worker changed your personality or your behavior? It didn't affect my ego. However, I feel like most people in this industry, it does give them a massively um, overinflated ego. Probably the most profound impact it had on me was it definitely screwed up my sex life and the way I view sex. Sex equals money. Either you can hire me or we can shoot a video and those are your two options. Let's say, you know, someone loves to draw, but then they start, they start drawing for a living and they become an artist. They kind of lose some of that enjoyment. So it definitely has crossed some wires in my head. Like, is it still something I enjoy? Yes, absolutely. But if it's not being filmed, it's like, okay, why am I just flushing money down the toilet? But definitely this connect to the next question. So do you still enjoy sex if it's not related to work? For me, outside of work, it has to be something that's uh, more intimate, if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 definitely. Does it ever happen to you that you develop any feelings for any co-workers? I won't name any names, but yeah, yeah. there was one scene in particular that I shot where like, You know, I always have good chemistry with my partners, but there was one person where I shot with where it was just like mind blowing, earth shattering, like best sex of my entire life type shit. But fundamentally, me and this person were just far too different for anything to come out of it. Oh, I guess to answer your question, was the potential there? Yes. Did it happen? No. No. Okay. So you work... Definitely with studio, and you also like work a lot with fan page to actually shoot your own content. Right. What, what do you prefer between 
those two things if there are like any preference or it's not even possible to compare the stuff i vastly vastly prefer shooting my own content i feel like my own content is more organic it's more real it's more authentic and i feel like that's part of the reason why the industry as a whole has started to shift more to the um, amateur side versus the studio side because you know when i'm shooting my own content a shoot takes about 90 minutes to two hours and that includes setup and takedown of equipment and the only breaks we'll take is to go to the bathroom or grab a drink or you know oh i just need a break for a couple of minutes that's it other than that there's no script there's no you know it's all authentic studio porn you know a a 30 minute film six to eight hours to 14 hours of shooting if not more and it's shoot for 30 to 45 seconds with a 20 minute break option a shooting my own content takes two hours or option b studio stuff takes three days if a studio approach to you now you will accept it or it's like a no upfront or you just like evaluate like i don't know the pay literally probably the biggest factor is what type of scene it is unfortunately because of the way that i look 99 percent of studio directors are not going to look at me and be like oh hey let's cast this guy in this super sensual and passionate scene right yeah they're like let's cast him as some like ultra dom abusive you know sadistic torture crap there's this one studio that keeps approaching me but basically they're their site is all about glorifying a particular drug. Yeah, no, I don't want my brand associated with that. Muscle Bear Porn, who I've shot for many times, like I love shooting with them because, you know, they shoot scenes that are very organic and real. And it's just, you know, there's not some super fucked up component to it, you know, and and they're also fun to hang out with. And, you know, so. Do you think that studio are still a thing in the, in the industry yeah no I, I i think they are i think that especially for particular kinks or fetishes or I, I don't see why both can't coexist however the studios at this point are essentially surviving off of people that are new in the industry that will take lower pay who don't have a following because once you get to a certain point you're making more off your own content. Do you um, listen to your followers about what they would like to see you to do? In The people who are paying money to subscribe to my OnlyFans or just for fans or loyal fans or, you know, my website or anything else. Yeah, I absolutely value their input, you know, and if they make a request that is something I can do, I will go out of my way to do that. And the only thing that prevents me from meeting those requests are like if someone's into some kind of like kink or fetish and it's not something I can put in the mainstream subscription section. You know, I I try to be as inclusive as possible with my content, like Asian or Arabin. Shit. That's like finding a fucking needle in a haystack here. And, you know, Denver, I God, is probably got to be 75% white. Anything that my page might be lacking as far as diversity is not due to me not wanting to, it's due to lack of availability. You're pretty much everywhere on every website, in every fan page ever. You have also your own website where people can just subscribe. Do you think it's a good type of marketing? Does it help or? Let's say you own Coca-Cola. Would you only sell your Coca-Cola at Walmart or would you sell it at as many retailers as you possibly could? For me, it's kind of like once a video is done and it's created, I want to put it on as many sites as possible. Most fans, you know, will only subscribe to loyal fans or Model Central or Fan Central or OnlyFans or Just for Fans or many vids or Clips for Sale or whatever. So I kind of want to reach as many people as you know, possible because, you know, once that's posted there, it can generate revenue, you know, forever. Do people recognize you on the street, somewhere, whatever? Jason, Jason, it's me. It started being a joke like several years ago, but I'd be like just walking through the gym and, you know, I'd be with one of my friends and, you know, some stranger would be like, oh, hey, Jason. It's like, okay, yep. I know where they know me from. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Last time I went to Cancun, I went with a friend 
And it was like the second day I was there, I got a text from some random number and they're like, oh, hey, Jason, are you in Cancun? I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, I literally have not posted anything on any social media that I'm here. And I'm like, how in the world did you know I was in Cancun? He's like, oh, I saw you at the airport. <laughs> how well, uh, yeah. Back again to the judgment side. When you start your career, did you lose any friends or family members because you were doing such a thing? No, I didn't lose any anyone because um, I just I, I take the whole like not giving a shit what people think to like the extreme probably to not a healthy place. Um, however, I will say it, and I just want to preface this by saying I totally understand. I don't judge them in any way shape or form for this but like like my son and like my mom know what i do but i remember like for the longest time like my son will be very hesitant like his girlfriend i think thought i was like a personal trainer for like the first year or something i didn't tell her that but like he told her that you know so like what my mom's friends think i do i i have no idea so you know and like my son he's 19 so i could understand how he would want to keep that on the DL, but it doesn't bother me. It's a question that I ask everybody in the industry, because I think somehow it's important to, to address this, or at least understand opinions about that. Do you think the porn industry and the sex industry could have some bad side effect on society? I think that's something that people who were perhaps well-known should go out of their way to address or, you know, kind of lead by example. Um, like, for example, I think probably one of the biggest things would be um anal sex because you know uh due to my uh width like some people can i mean i've, I've had partners that take 45 minutes to you know become fully relaxed but the thing is what they don't realize is that shit gets edited out so they get this preconceived notion in their head they're like oh you can just spit on your dick and ram it in and it's like no it doesn't work like that at all or you know when i'm with someone i always tell them like i'm extremely gentle and patient take your time no rush at all like take as much time as you need and there's a big difference between <laughs> what looks good on camera versus what actually feels good. You know, so people get these things in their head like, oh, like car sex or shower sex. It's like super hot. And it's like, fuck no, it's not. It's car sex is not comfortable at all. It's like the worst thing in the world. <laughs> people will get this idea in their head they're like oh my god i'm somehow inadequate or i'm somehow less because i only like these one or two or three positions or you know i just like to have sex in bed and it's like no dude that's like totally normal that's like everybody like get this 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 image out of your head you open a youtube channel that's called cigar talks with jason right and where pretty much you just like Turn on your camera and start to talk about different topics. Do you want to share something about that? Why did you start? And there are like some good memories about this. The thing that I love about my, my YouTube channel, Cigar Talks with Jason, is because I feel like I'm able to be a person that people really start to objectify you. And it's basically a lot of times people view you like an amusement park ride. But I'm actually convinced that I could post a picture of my dick on Twitter and be like, I hate all of you guys. I hope you all die in a fire. And it'd still get a thousand likes because no one would bother reading the caption. On my YouTube channel, like I'll talk about, you know, sex, relationships, just having a positive mindset, just so many different aspects of life. And the feedback that I get on there is like, you know, thank you so much. Like you helped me through this or you helped me to understand that or I was able to grow as a person. And it's like, like, yeah, I actually get to be a person again and do something that's having like a positive impact that's benefiting people yeah my youtube channel far and away the favorite part of my job absolutely let's say somebody want to join the porn industry the sex industry there are any suggestion for these people the biggest one is it's very easy to glorify the adult industry but just understand sex is probably five percent of what i do the other 95% of what I do is editing and uploading endlessly and messaging with fans on OnlyFans and just for fans and all my other sites 
and, you know, marketing myself on Twitter and Instagram. And if you're getting into this industry, understand it is really hard work. I've lost count of how many people on Twitter have messaged me and, you know, they did those first one or two scenes and then never did anything else. And they're not willing to put in the time and effort and energy. So if you're the type of person that sees right here, you only see what's right in front of your face. Do not get into the adult industry. When I got into it, I absolutely fundamentally understood this isn't going to pay off you know, today or tomorrow or next week or next month. And with the initial investment that I made into all the equipment, I didn't like actually turn a profit until like 10 months in. Any new context we can expect from your channel that you can just like give us some preview? I've got a ton more videos. Like I've been shooting a ton more raw content lately. Jim loved Air Force Couple, the financial advisor. At this point, I mean, I've probably got, I could not shoot content for the next nine months and I'd have updates. Okay. To post and I've got a leather solo coming out next week as well, which a lot of people have been asking for. Yeah. Thank you a lot, Jason, for being my guest. I really appreciate your time and our talk. It was a pleasure.